Hi, Sai. Hi. Hi, hello. Hi, How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Very well, thanks. Yeah, so we have Vidya. Looks like it's raining. <laughs> Hi, Vidya. Hi. Hi, Sai. Hi, Vidya. Is it raining in Bangalore? No, no, no. Fan, fan. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, shall we wait for a couple of minutes? Yeah, we can. Um, we can wait for, I think, yeah, a couple of minutes should be good. Yeah. Or else let's start and uh, we'll have people joining in. Yes, yes. We'll have some time for uh, question and answers also. Then. Sure. Okay. Uh, so, hello everyone. Uh, thank you so much uh, for joining joining us today. And um, uh, so, this is uh, something you know. The plan is to have uh, multiple live sessions uh, with uh, Coach Sai Ramnath. Uh, so, we will be covering uh, like you know, we will be creating a series uh, kind of uh, thing, uh, which will be covering the entire nutrition uh, of a new mother. And uh, today's topic of discussion uh, is healthy lifestyle changes uh, for postpartum care. Uh, now, uh, healthy lifestyle changes are required by each and every one of us and not just by postpartum women. Um, but then, yeah, uh, during the postpartum time, this uh, gets extremely crucial and important, um, you know, to have a healthy lifestyle. Because uh, during the pregnancy, the woman's body has actually undergone a lot of changes and um, it is under a lot of stress. So uh, it's very important uh, to have a proper diet and nutrition plan in place uh, once uh, the woman gives birth to a child so that like you know it will help her uh, to heal and uh, recover uh, properly. So along with all the other things, uh, we need to really focus uh, on the diet and nutrition of a new mother. And um, uh, we have Coach Sai Ramnath uh, here with us today to address this uh, very particular topic. Um, and um, uh, you know, all I can say about him is like, you know, he is the best in what he does. Uh, he is extremely passionate uh, about uh, health and fitness. And yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah, so I was, uh, I don't know if I missed the introduction part, I'll start it again. Uh, so, Coach Sai Ramnath is here with us today and uh, he is extremely passionate about health and fitness and uh, he has helped a number of people uh, to achieve their own health and uh, fitness goals. Um, he is currently working as a coach uh, with the uh, FITTR, uh, we call it as Fitter. So that is an online uh, wellness program and um, he is a certified professional uh, from Precision Nutrition and uh, INFS official. Uh, so all in all, we have uh, with us an expert uh, in nutrition and fitness. And um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and also someone who believes uh, that uh, to enjoy and uh, to truly live your life, it's very much required to be healthy and fit. Um, uh, Sai, we are so happy. We are so glad and happy that uh, you know you accepted our request uh, to join our live session, and um, it gives us immense pleasure to have you with us. And I'm sure we have a lot uh, to learn from you. Hey, um, thank you so much uh, for having me here, uh, Vidya and Nilupar. Uh, this is my first live session, so uh, I'm pretty excited as well. Uh, so thank you so much uh, once again uh, for conducting this. Um, I, I think, um, uh, you know, like you rightly pointed out, uh, I think as, as you know, postpartum mothers, they require a lot more attention. They require a lot more care uh, because uh, it's not just about them, but I think uh, they have uh, they have another 
human being their own version of it uh, depending on them uh, so um, i have had experience the last four and a half years that i have been with fitter so fitter is a uh, for those of you who don't know fitter so fitter is an online wellness platform um, so we've been under existence uh, since 2015 officially um, so the platform started off as a whatsapp group uh, so the the founder of uh, fitter is mr jitendra choksi um, so what started off as a whatsapp group with 10 people eventually grew to 50 and then from there on uh, now it's a community of uh, more than a million people um so i became part of this uh, particular platform since 2017 and uh, i'm 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 a working professional i i work in an mnc i head a uh, team called uh, uh, i mean i head the customer success team for the small and medium business but uh, apart from my full time job um this is something that i'm really passionate about so i'm 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 doing my best i hope i'm doing i continue to do justice to balance out both uh, my full time profession and my uh, passion as well uh, so i excited to be here um so uh, i'm i'm happy to take all your questions uh, and and uh, this is one of the most important sessions and in fact i wanted to do a solo live session but i think uh, this opportunity fell right into my lap and uh, it's 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 phenomenal uh, to be part of uh, this uh, panel and share my knowledge and i would uh, try and do as best as i can in terms of answering your questions so thank you so much thank you yeah uh, so you know like the topic we have uh, today is like you know to uh, make healthy lifestyle changes uh, to ensure uh, proper care uh, of a new mother okay so in lifestyle changes one of the thing that i can think of uh, me myself being a new mom recently uh, so is that you know that uh, there's a lot of talk on the energy levels uh, you know of um, uh, of a woman after having a child after having given birth to a child so like you know if i talk uh, talk about it in layman uh, terms so how would you like you know just like i i'm not very well versed with uh, like you know all the uh technical technicality of nutrition okay so in layman terms how can you explain it uh, sai sure um so i think um, yeah so before we delve deeper into understanding what are the energy requirements for a new mother right i think what is more important is for people uh, for mothers generally they need to understand what energy is the, i think it's very important for us to understand what energy is in layman terms so that you're able to understand the concept and then uh implement those in your lifestyle right so because uh what before i go deeper into the topic what we need to understand is lifestyle transformation is more important than short term uh transformation like a three month or six month or, or otherwise called a social media transformation so uh one of the most ignored part of a new mother is the mother tends to ignore her own own health so i think uh, this is this session um, you know needs to happen i mean I'm, we are planning to have it multiple sessions so i think uh, new mothers definitely would need to do- join this uh, uh, session and uh, and they they would definitely benefit on this yeah so coming back to what energy is so in layman terms right energy is nothing but the capacity to do work right so okay. as humans we all have uh, energy st- stored within right and how is this energy stored is basically the energy comes from the food that we eat right and so the food is digested and then it is uh, metabolized and uh, the body stores them as energy right so that's how we have we build the capacity so depending upon the kind of intake that we have uh, <clears throat> the energy system the, the energy capacity varies between uh, a mother to mother or between two individuals be it man or woman or whatever it is and when it comes to let's say new mother definitely the intense intensity of energy expenditure is definitely going to be very very high so in short terms energy is nothing but the capacity to do your work and the energy that uh, we derive is com- is coming from the food which is basically uh, the food is digested and is absorbed in the body as energy and the way we measure energy right so everything needs to be measured in some way or the other so the way we measure energy is in terms of calories right so calorie oh. is the unit of measurement right now when we talk about calories just like computer right computer understands 
just zeros and ones no matter whatever you type on the screen right eventually gets converted as zeros and ones like that our body also understands the language of energy and energy balance so no matter whatever you do it's basically the calorie in versus calorie out calorie in is what you intake through food and calorie out is what you expend right when you say expend it's basically what you burn in simple language so that's that's what energy and energy balance is so when you talk about energy balance right so it's nothing but what your body needs what your body has spent right and what your body has uh, i mean like intake maintenance and outtake output right so in input and output right now in terms of energy balance to give it in a very simple term if the body is going to be fed with more energy than it needs right that is called calorie surplus surplus means anything that's over and above right so anything over and above is called calorie surplus so when you consume food that is uh, more than the required uh, energy by the body then it's called calorie surplus and that leads to weight gain now on the flip side if you eat i mean if the calorie in is is going to be lesser than uh, is going to be lesser than the uh, calorie out so basically you eat food basically eat, consume the calories which is going to be lesser than the uh, amount of calories that your body has burned so that's called calorie deficit which means that the body is basically uh, securing like le- uh, lesser energy than what it needs so that leads to losing weight or losing fat right now if the input is going to be uh, the same as the output so calorie in if it's going to be equal to calorie output then it's called maintenance so for example if a person let's say is a 70 kg individual right to maintain 70 kgs of weight if the person is a kind of let's say equating both calorie in calorie out as one component then it's called maintenance so for example if your intake is equal to output the person will continue to maintain 70 kg of weight in simple terms oh. but if the person for example if the body requires let's say 2000 calories to maintain 70 kg weight and if the person uh, ends up consuming lesser than 2000 kg 2000 calories sorry uh, the the person will end up losing weight right but if the requirement oh. is only 2000 calories and you end up consuming more than 2000 it means the bo- the person will end up gaining weight so this is called energy balance in simple terms so you feed what the body needs uh body maintains the same weight you feed more than what the body needs the body gains weight you feed lesser than what the body needs the body will i mean the human body will lose its weight this is this is the basics okay. of nutrition okay uh, uh, okay you told us about how much we need i mean maintenance of in uh, calories and how maintenance of weight but how will a new mother know how much energy is needed for her or what is how much energy is expected that she should have because she is already uh, is feeding her baby she has to uh, cope up with her health because she is already she has just delivered a baby and trying to you know cope up with other health issues as well so she does not have any idea about how much energy she needs so right how, uh, how can she right uh, sorry i just have yeah. to interrupt Yeah, so along with like you know what Vidya mentioned uh, that you know uh, how how will we understand is that how much and how much energy is really required uh, like you know by our body especially when you're a new mother and you're breastfeeding the child and uh, you know that there is a substantial amount of calories which are required for that activity as well plus you know uh, there is a general uh, tendency among uh, women to uh, kind of like you know eat in more than what is required just you know with the uh, the underlying assumption that you need a lot of energy for breastfeeding okay so pe- people end up you know gaining unnecessary fat uh, in their bodies which is which is actually detrimental to the health uh, you know um, uh, directly detrimental or indirectly detrimental to the health so how we have that balance you know where in Uh, uh, as we have put it, like you know, how how do we get that balance so that we do not end up like you know consuming more than what is really required by our body? True. And uh, so, like, you know, so without being you know, because like if if I am a new mother, I have so many things to take care of. I have to take care of the baby and like you know, take care of multiple things around me. So without really focusing that I have to intake so much of carb and protein and you know and keeping in mind that calorie counter, how do I go about it? 
right so um if, if the i mean i understand what you're trying to uh, say so to summarize if you're going to ask me um is the energy requirement for a new mother or 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 a, or a person who's just into postpartum is it going to be different than any other individual the the short answer is it's absolutely yes right why because okay. when the mother delivers a child and you know we all understand the first four months of uh, the baby being born uh, it's uh, it's absolutely critical that uh, you know the the baby derives uh, nutrition from its mother right and the only source of nutrition for a baby in the first four months at least is basically the mother's milk right so the, the, the yes. uh, they say that mother's milk is the super food that can be given to a child right and uh the short answer is like i mentioned it's absolute yes yes the energy demands for a postpartum mother will be very high as compared to uh, a mother who is doesn't breastfeed the children right so um in short if i have to tell you uh, a mother any uh, burns anywhere between 300 to four, uh, 500 calories of energy just through bre- breastfeeding so they it's oh. it's a, it's an energy intense process and uh, the mother would definitely need a lot more energy uh, having said that mm-hmm. on the flip side um, does it give the freedom for the mother to eat anything and everything under the sun uh, def- uh, i wouldn't say yes to that because uh, what happens is since the mother goes through a lot of um, you know uh, physiological changes after after the delivery of the kid uh, and psychological changes of course um, i think what Uh, needs to be done is the postpartum like i mentioned right there has to be an a proper balance of nutrition it's not just about one macronutrient when i say macronutrient uh, not carbo so there are three macronutrients first of all protein carbohydrates and fats right so it's not just about eating one macronutrient in abundance and then ignoring the other uh, so definitely it's an energy intense process definitely the mother needs additional calories but like i mentioned it's not uh, uh, you know it's not a free uh, freebie for the mothers to eat anything and everything because what happens is you are only breastfeeding and you are not let's say if you are not moving around much what eventually happens is you eat a lot more than your body requires you end up gaining more weight right so mm-hmm. that translates into other physiological problems for the mother which will indirectly affect the kid right, right. so i think i think uh, what uh, you know we, there are, there has to be an approach there has to be a proper approach a structured approach towards um the calorie planning for a postpartum mother so um, de- definitely the uh, they they need to balance their nutrition so they need to have adequate amount of protein uh, uh more carbs for sure and required amount of dietary fats because it's not that you c- you can stay completely away from dietary fats right so that's not okay. possible and it's not that you can keep gorging on any um of you know carbohydrate food right you know just randomly no. eating stuff and it's not that you can completely um ignore protein so that's the reason why i said mm-hmm. it's very very important to have a balanced approach so you got to have optimal mm-hmm. protein intake a uh, good amount of carbohydrate intake and uh, the mandatory dietary fat intake for for the breastfeeding to continue as long as a mother wants to continue Okay. Okay. So, okay. Um, you said about macronutrients, right? Um, I'm, I, I am a vegetarian, so I, I don't know. I know protein is important, but uh, since a new mother is having difficulty in digestion, okay, and she does not know how much protein is needed for her, so there is a high chance. So we were given uh, rasam. So that means diluted. Uh, it's just diluted water with some mixed herbs, okay. So rasam was in Tamil. uh so when i'm eating that i'm i hardly get any protein with that right so uh, how i mean the uh, our main motive is to help her in digestion because uh, usually women go through constipation after delivery in this case they are yes they are giving us all dry fruit ladoos and everything but yes so there is sweet in that there are carbs in that but uh, how much protein is there no idea uh in this case do you think supplements is it recommended for new mothers or uh, is it a good way of uh, you know including supplements for a new mother because we are breast uh, new mothers are breastfeeding the kid whatever we consume is going to the kid so how safe is that and your uh, take on that 
So, uh, and that's a very interesting question, uh, Vidya, because the uh, moment we talk about supplements, right, there is a stigma in the society that uh, you shouldn't be consuming whey protein and uh, whey is dangerous, it, it might not digest and all of that, right? Mm. But uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not, not uh, generalizing just, I mean, I'm not talking about just whey protein, but there are definitely some supplements like, let's say, fish oil, uh, you know, a few other mm. multivitamins that you might be consuming. Right. Uh, so the general stigma is uh, whatever you consume, you got to be very conscious because uh, since a kid is directly dependent on you for the first at least six months to one year, uh, you know, there is always a fear in, in, in the family, in the, the minds of the mother that what if I consume something that is definitely going to uh, you know, impair the uh, child's digestion. But the part over here that people don't really understand is, yes, Supplements, if you ask me if it's mandatory or recommendatory, I would say supplements is recommendatory. Supplements is not mandatory, right? However, oh. as, a, as a person, let's say, suppose a, pers- a mother who's a vegetarian, like a pure vegetarian, not mm. I mean, when it, in India, people have a different definition of vegetarian. Uh, there are some vegetarian who eats egg, and then we'll have to be, you know, a mm. uh, little, uh, little uh, sure about what they exactly mean by vegetarian. So th- there are some people who claim that. But yeah, having said that, no eggs... Uh, completely depend on uh, dairy products, right? So for mothers who are completely vegetarian, right, dairy products are a complete source of protein, right? So before I go deeper into it, I just want to highlight for a fact that, uh, you know, proteins are also called amino acids, okay? So there are some amino acids that are already present in your body, which are kind of, let's say, non-essential amino acids. Right, your body is able to do that. But there are some essential amino acids which you have to derive from food because essential amino acids is not something that you can uh, you know, manufacture on your own. And that needs to come through mm-hmm. food. That's the reason uh, food is very, very special to human beings because that's the first relationship that we associate to and nothing else right, in this world. So uh, for vegetarians, the most, uh, you know, they can use dairy products, curd, paneer, uh, mm-hmm. cheese, Oh. Right, uh, mm-hmm. milk. Right, so uh, soya chunks. Right, so uh, soya chunks is one of the most underrated vegetarian protein sources. People uh, think that you know eating soya chunks is going to uh, bump my estrogen levels to high levels, so I'm not supposed to take soya chunks and all of that. Trust me when I say this. This is all absolute myth. And uh, uh, you know I'm a vegetarian, uh, and I'm I'm proud of it as well. Uh, so I don't really need. Uh, you know, let's say eggs or chicken or anything as such for to complete my protein sources. So uh, a vegetarian individual can complete their protein sources from like soy. The soy chunks is in fact one of the uh, very good source of protein, right? That is something that is mm-hmm. soy chunks is basically the soy nuggets, a meal maker that I'm talking about. So you can derive protein, complete protein sources from that. You can derive protein sources from paneer, curd, milk, cheese, and all of that, right? So, we, uh, so when you look at, let's say, the protein requirements, right? So, you, like you rightly mentioned, um, women undergo constipation problems you know, d- during delivery or just after uh, delivery. So, it's very important that the, you know, the, the food that you eat, right, is uh, like something like rice or anything else. So rice generally typically has... Uh, fiber, right? So try and include, mothers can definitely include some green leafy vegetables like spinach or broccoli or anything as such to keep the fiber going because fiber is something that's not absorbed by your body, right? Human body cannot digest fiber or absorb it, right? It can only, fiber will only break down your, uh, you know, your, your, uh, your food, right? And then it, it helps a little bit in the metabolism part of it and it will only add bulk to your stool. So one of the ways to so, get rid of constipation problem is adding fiber to your diet, right? You can um, add, uh, uh, and fiber can come from your green leafy vegetables. Rice is a great source of fiber. Uh, dal is a great mm-hmm. source of fiber. And one more thing that I have commonly observed is that people think uh, dal is a full source of protein. That's, that's, that's mm-hmm. not true. So dal is basically fall under the lentils group and rice for, mm-hmm. uh, in a form, I mean, falls under the, the legumes part. So, to make a complete source of protein, you got to combine both rice and dal to make it a complete source of protein. Because like I, I told you about essential amino acids, right? So some of the essential amino, there, there are few essential amino acids that are missing in rice. There are few that are missing in dal. But when you combine both, you get complete source of protein. But the downsides of that is the uh, rice and dal is high on carbs. There, there is moderate, low to moderate amount of protein, but it's rich in carbs. So you also need to uh, take into consideration other food sources 
that does not overshoot your carbohydrate level too high so that you have e- equal proportion of carbohydrates dietary fats and protein so oh, so okay. a, mo- a mother can start as little as let's say 0.9 grams per kg of body weight or probably 1 gram per kg of body weight in order to you know not mm-hmm. not let's say some people's digestive system might be little sensitive right so what mm-hmm. you can do is uh, uh, you know you can start with let's say 0.9 grams to 1 gram and then slowly build it up rather than you know because mm-hmm. what happens is if you suddenly uh, bring in a huge amount of protein uh you know intake into your food it becomes very difficult for mm. people to digest and it can lead to constipation mm. so like i mentioned at yeah. the start of the topic it's lifestyle transformation so you got to make it slow and steady so that you you're you're building better relationship with food okay right okay. so that's how yeah. you got to balance it. okay how about non veg i mean we covered the veg vegetarian mm-hmm. could you just cover a non sure. vegetarian part yeah so uh, unfortunately uh, you know uh, non vegetarian i mean vegetarian mothers have a slight disadvantage as compared to non vegetarian uh, people because non vegetarian food are great source of protein i mean like uh, eggs i mean you when i say that when i said that way it doesn't, it doesn't mean that vegetarian uh, sources don't have protein uh, whatever i just mentioned does cover that but people who consume non vegetarian food like including eggs and meat right they have they get full source of protein they don't need to do any kind of combination like for example chicken breast right it's a great source of protein mm-hmm. uh, to get uh, you know good like a 100 gram boneless skinless chicken breast gives you around 25 to 30 grams of protein in one one uh, meal right and then you can have fish uh, prawns mm-hmm. uh, so any form of meat are great sources of protein so uh, i think they uh, especially non vegetarian mothers do not have to look outside for supplementing uh, you know their protein intake whereas vegetarian mothers can give it a consideration of supplementing protein uh, in their in their daily uh, intake that's a very good point uh, sir really yeah yeah i used to think you know i i really rice and dal combination you made it really clear it's not just dal combine it to it came as a surprise to me as well because it was always that uh, dal is the source of protein and uh, so yeah i mean when we, when we say that no uh, like you know uh, we are vegetarian then it would be like you have so many dals so eat them Right. yeah that's a problem yeah. so the other problem is uh, uh, i'm sorry to interrupt uh, but the other problem that i have observed in my four years of experience with different clients is that uh, when you uh, you know uh, as as new mothers right sometimes you may go through a little bit of bloating and gas gas issues as well and the problem is of the mother is going through that and when the mother breastfeeds the child the child also uh, can you know get a little bit of bloating and gassing so my recommendation is what i have pretty much done with my clients is that i have actually asked them to avoid masoor dal and tur dal moong dal is okay. moong dal is little safer as compared to other two dals so uh, th- this is something that i learned through experience and you know speaking with my fellow mentors as well so uh, moong dal is a better source of dal uh, yeah chikpi rajma uh, and any forms of dal they all, they all have the same uh, amino acid profile or the same amount of calories chikpi and rajma i might little uh, i mean i might avoid especially rajma because uh, rajma is little heavy on the uh, uh, gas part that's mainly because of you know um, the way the, the the food the commodity is so i would generally uh, recommend people to go for moong dal uh, just to be safer mm-hmm. on their digestion process and everything and yeah just like any of you until i came into this platform i mean i until i became a mentor right um, right from childhood Uh, i was made to believe that dal is a full source i mean dal is complete protein i, I got to eat as much as i can uh, well it didn't make much of difference when i was young but then when i started to uh, you know when i when i uh, grew into a teen and then finally when i entered my 20s i started realizing that i was putting on little more of you know belly uh, of course it was not quantified i should say that but the thing is uh, uh, you know i understood what complete source of protein is and what incomplete source of protein is okay yeah nice nice yes yeah and um, what uh, how much hydration i mean uh, uh, i mean hydration i mean like uh, while breastfeeding once i when i was feeding my daughter i used to really thirsty at the end of you know my feeding i used to feel like drinking something like gallons and gallons of water 
and i used to feel again i need something something liquid not solid i always look and sometimes water is just not enough i want something some juice or something so the hydration should the mother have because i i did feel tired also once i uh, after the feeding i did not drink enough water i used to feel so tired and you know literally drained out and i could feel the difference after i drink water i could feel i am once i am hydrated i am a little better so how how important is hydration right so uh, like i uh, mentioned before let me reiterate breastfeeding is an energy intense process like i mentioned it definitely depends on how much of milk your baby is drinking right so if if your baby uh, you know let's say feeds on you a little more so obviously you will feel tired at the end of the day and drinking water alone is definitely not going to um, you know let's say either uh, curb your hunger um, in that way or drinking juice so uh, before i come into the hydration level one suggestion that i would like to give people is try and have as much as solid food than liquid food because liquid food are, is not going to fill your stomach it's not going to be uh, f- fulfilling right so when you're going to drink a lot of juice right it's not going to really help and also when you drink a lot of juice you are essentially missing out on the fiber uh, which is of no okay. use right so basically you're just going to drink uh, you know the, the you know something like a flavored water right so i think it's important for every mother that if you wish to incorporate fruits in your diet just ensure that you eat the fruit as a whole rather than having it as juice right that's point number okay. one right because solid food always supersedes liquid food that's point number one point number two uh, like i mentioned you need to have a good Uh, proportion of protein in your diet because protein is extremely filling right protein is a highly mm-hmm. satiating food and like i mentioned you know you eat 100 grams of paneer and then you let's say you eat uh, some some other source of food right it's not going to be really filling so that's the reason why bringing a balance in the nutrition is definitely going to help okay so coming back to the hydration levels please drink per your thirst right i uh, in mm-hmm. general recommendation that i give for let's say a a, a, a man or uh, you know a mother who doesn't breastfeed right so i keep a lim- uh, recommendation of 3 liters to start with for a non breastfeeding mother and 3.5 liters for let's say a, a, you know a person who's uh, physically active or rather mm-hmm. you know pro- i i try and keep it at 4 liters but to start with but for breastfeeding mothers right you will be hungry at the same time you might be thirsty as well so always fill up bottles and keep by your side and drink to thirst uh, you know okay. so this is my uh, you know 4 liter gallon uh, and 4 uh, liter bottle which i got it from the us so i can imagine that with this heat uh, with the kind of workouts i do i have to drink so much of water and even sometimes i feel that this doesn't suffice my thirst and i can imagine what a new mother would be going through in terms of you know the the baby clinging on to the mother all the time and breastfeeding and you're tired you're you're thirsty so always have uh, you know a liters of bottles spilled around the house i think this is the best time for you guys to get maximum work done from the family members so i think i think you need yeah. to uh, you need to keep a lot of bottles around the house like click keep Uh, bottles in the kitchen uh, in your bedroom uh, you know wherever you go on the table wherever you go keep drinking a lot of water hydration level is definitely important because um, uh, you know the last thing you would want is feeling dehydrated and not having the energy to feed a child which is crying a lot right so yeah. you know, i have to admit like you know having uh, uh, consuming more water uh, would also uh, relieve constipation to some extent Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, because you know when uh, in the process of producing uh, breast milk, the mother's body is actually extracting a lot of water uh, which she has consumed and like you know transferring back to the baby. So you know it's it's definitely the water requirement is much more than uh, like you know uh, if I was not breastfeeding my baby, I would need uh, a lot less water than uh, when I am feeding the baby myself, right? well it's not about needing uh, needing a lot less water water requirements per individual uh, i think it's better to always be uh, my recommendation has always been to my clients to keep it 3 and up of for sure and when it comes to breastfeeding mothers yes definitely drink a lot more it's not that you know uh, you don't have to force yourself force yourself if you're a new mother and you're just trying to drink water don't force yourself to drink 4 liters of water the last thing you do is end up puking right so i think what we need to understand is yes drink to thirst and uh, as you rightly pointed out the the mother's milk actually has a lot of water component than the actual milk component itself 
right so i think um, if if you feel that you know you're feeling dehydrated and you want to drink a lot of water i think it's it's um, imperative that you definitely drink a lot of water and keep drinking it to your thirst but at the same time okay. just as yeah as much as you feel thirsty and not to overdo it or like set one particular limit that i have to consume this much water so it's more like you know how you feel so go as per like whatever you uh, like you know whatever your body needs uh, at that time right right but eventually your body will get adapted to that your body is an amazing system right it adapts to everything right that's why yeah. uh, that's why as humans we have sustained so many thousands of years despite several calamities right a human body is amazing in terms of adapting to it so let's say suppose uh, like i mentioned right so i uh, if i drink any any day if i drink uh, less than 4 liters of water right suddenly i feel like i'm i'm in some desert because my body demands mm-hmm. that amount of water because i'm so used to drinking that and i i made it a compulsive habit like i keep sipping water every day for every set that i do right so uh, like i mentioned it's it's about adaptation so adaptation takes time mm-hmm. right it's not uh, you got to take it slow and steady like i mentioned lifestyle so lifestyle is something mm-hmm. that you adapt to it and an adaptation has to be slow and steady yeah so i think like you know uh, when you talking about lifestyle so uh, it's more like you know rather than making these changes after you have a baby start changing uh, your habits i mean you know transforming them into good habits well before you uh, like you know have the baby so that uh-huh. you can seamlessly transform yourself uh into your postpartum uh, period right absolutely absolutely that's a very valid point uh you know uh during the uh, you know especially first time mothers right the the, the part is uh, when they get pregnant when they go through different trimesters um people uh, tend to ignore uh you know simple things which it eventually turns complex like you you just don't uh, you're you're not mindful about what you eat you don't drink water uh you know uh you let's say uh, you screw up your sleep and all of that so i think uh, yeah it becomes slightly difficult when you're on the third trimester to drink a lot of water right uh, so you're already heavier and the last thing you want is keep visiting the loo all the time but yeah there is a def- decent bit of hydration level that you definitely ought to maintain but like you mentioned um if you have already made it a habit and you've just taken a small small break it doesn't become difficult for you to you know uh, start again you know to to get into this part right but if if you are somebody who has never done this before uh, i think it's better late than never right so uh, because hydration like i like you mentioned it not only helps with uh, uh, you know relieving constipation because obviously water definitely is required by the body to push out its toxins right either to sweat or urine or feces right but what is more important is water also maintains your core temperature um you know let's say you know let's say two three days you go less on water you can automatically feel your body more warmer than it than it should be right and you'll you'll start seeing uh, uh, you know let's say boils breaking out uh, on your face or in your shoulders i mean people i mean like i have seen that personally uh i have, sometimes if i go low on water after heavy intense workout right in two or three days i had a lot of boils on my back right so water al- also keeps a uh, yeah water also keeps your skin fresh uh, you know it keeps your uh, skin from getting dry uh, maintains a good bo- uh, you know core temperature you know the, the ad- adequate core temperature uh, helps with your constipation so on and so forth so uh, there are like um, multitudes of benefits when it comes to drinking water and and this is one of the most important part that uh, new mothers need to understand and i'm sure that that's the reason why we're having this conversation as well uh, i think we are we have almost reached the end of the session uh, but we can now spend few minutes uh, on questions and answers yeah like uh, I'm um, asking any question to our uh, teacher, please do so in the comments. Yeah. Uh, I, I think uh, there are a couple of questions that came up, so probably you guys can yeah, scroll actually, through. Yeah, actually, I was thinking of doing. I was just thinking of scrolling this. Just give me a moment. Yes, yes. Issue... of gas trouble thanks for touching and explaining yeah so there are people thanking us for talking on uh, the topics which we already spoke about 
I don't know. Yeah. How about sprouted or gram? I think this question um, is mainly related to the protein uh, intake. Uh, right. Let me just go through all of them and then we can collectively answer them. Mm-hmm. I'll probably answer the sprouted horse gram. So it's not so different from yeah. your, uh, uh, you know, your chana dal or moong dal or masoor dal or tul dal. It's it's still part of the uh, lentils uh, category. So it's not a complete source mm-hmm. of protein. So um, it's highly recommended that you um, couple that with, let's say, rice or wheat or ra- ragi, rava, vermicelli. Uh, most of it has the same calories, right? I think uh, one other thing that I really wanted to touch base is people trying to lose weight by switching from rice to wheat okay uh, but the best part is both uh, you know are you know both have a difference of just 10 calories so whoever it no. is on the i mean breastfeeding mothers non breastfeeding mothers you are in for a huge surprise rice and wheat have typically the same calories so if somebody is going to tell you that uh, you know stop eating rice and probably you need to eat uh, 50 grams of atta uh, you know you can rest assured that it's, it's still going to be the same amount of calories and you're not going to lose weight wow this is no. i knew <laughs> <laughs> right yeah, rice I, is not the culprit this, wow this is something really amazing uh, i'm at least i'm not able to find all the questions because they are like you know uh, intertwined maybe what i can do sai is i can list up the questions and i can share it with you uh so that like you know we can reply to the individual uh, after we post this video on igtv but then yeah coming back to the rice and wheat topic this is something like you know a complete uh, shocker to me this is something <laughs> new i love eating rice and you know i have been avoiding rice for most of my life you know what is gain to back it up because it becomes part yeah. of me Uh, I would say that uh, I would say that if you have missed eating rice, I think uh, you missed a lot of fun. Uh, because if you are somebody who loved eating biryani, I think you have you have wasted some uh, some time of your life. Uh, so I can tell you right now that you can definitely go and uh, take uh, measure 100 grams of chicken and a little bit of rice and make chicken biryani for <laughs> <of> it. <laughs> uh, but uh, but yeah, I would love to touch base on. Um, Uh, a little more detail on these macronutrient requirements probably in our next session uh, when i'm going to cover mm-hmm. uh, lifestyle disorders so uh, i think most of the myths would be covered in that as well so i'll try and do my best uh, to bust out as many myths as possible uh, but yeah new mothers uh, you can definitely go ahead and have uh, rice rice is not the villain uh, maybe it's made out to be and uh, and yes Uh, eating ghee is not going to make you fat eating rice is not going to make you fat and if you're somebody eating rice then like was it some beet farmer or something i don't know so uh, I, i i it's it's um <laughs> it's, <laughs> no it's uh, we we call we have a name for this we call this as bro science so bro science is something that uh, it's been shared uh, as a grape wine and uh, it can never be um it can never be confirmed with uh, facts so any 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 information without facts is bro science so uh, oh. people saying that you know lifting weights make a woman manly that's that's a classic example of bro science uh, eating uh, egg yolk will increase cholesterol in your body that's another bro science eating egg yolk will make you fat eating fat makes you fat don't eat paneer if you're trying to lose mm-hmm. weight uh so i think i i think the list is endless uh, i don't think so this one session will definitely be uh, enough for me to cover that yeah. but uh, yeah i'll try and cover that in the next session for sure yeah so you say i mean like, you know the, this session i i am like you know i have got two three shockers and i need to, i need some time to sit back and absorb them but it was a great session and it was very informative and there were some things which came out just as hidden gems yeah <laughs> So they nah. were just like you know, they were out of our discussion, but they popped in and like you know they are the stars now. So yeah, I mean I'm sure it was uh, like you know helpful to all the people who uh, have been watching this. And thank you so much uh, for sharing all your valuable information with us. Um, and uh, we look forward uh, to uh, many more sessions with you. Thanks, thanks, uh, yeah. Vidya, yeah. and thanks, Nilufar, for having me here. Uh, it's an absolute pleasure. Um, so I think it's a great uh, opportunity for me to. uh share my knowledge um i i wouldn't call myself an expert because um as much as i keep uh, you know looking into it as much as i keep digging in there is an you know an a humongous amount of information that keeps pouring in but i think this is just an opportunity for me to share whatever i have learned uh so uh, i'm happy more than happy to 
keep learning and sharing that because my my job as a um you know mentor or a coach is to raise awareness i i i i had gone through a couple of it and i didn't know what was right until i was exposed to science and i learned about it uh, but i think uh, it's my responsibility to ensure that uh, people um definitely uh, you know get awareness about it because this is one area where people are not aware i mean they're like shooting in the dark right that's the right term that i can use so uh, thank you so much for having me with you and nilufar it's an absolute pleasure uh, being here and uh, discussing with you guys thank you thank you so much thank you thank you yes <laughs> series so stay tune people bye thank, thank you guys you. cheers bye bye